Out optimistic about the Etoll Court victory, and South Africa wants nuclear contract to stay at home. I'm Nebo Changela with this news update. Chairperson of the Opposition to Urban Tolling Alliance, Wayne Devon, H. says he's optimistic about winning in today's application to seek an urgent interdict to stop next Monday's launch of the Gauteng e tolling system in the North High Court in Pretoria. With less than a week left before e tolling goes live, the campaigns against and for the system are gathering momentum. An umbrella organization called the Tollgate Action Group is planning to be added as a friend of the court in Arta's urgent application. In support of the tolls, the National Treasury has jumped into the legal fray and applied for leave to intervene in the case. Tovenage says if they do not get the interdict, that would mean the end of their efforts. We hope so. I'm, I'm sure, you know, we didn't uh, come this far and put together a very scantily uh, prepared program, um, uh, uh, argument. Our, our case is very strong. The grounds that we are fighting this on is the unreasonableness and the rationality of, of the administration costs that the people have to bear to pay for something when we didn't have to do this. So if, if we lose today, it's not the end of it. It's only round one, and we will have in the next couple of months an outcome of whether the e-tolling e- e- is illegal or not. South Africa wants to see its firms eventually being awarded the bulk of the contracts and its 400 billion rand plan to build six nuclear plants. Firms from France, the United States, Japan, South Korea, China and Russia have been lining up for a chance to win the contract. ESCOM Chief Executive Brian Dame says while the first of the nuclear power units may also secure 35% localized content, the country wants to see the rise to about 70%. The contract will be one of the largest South Africa has offered since a multi-billion arms steel about a decade ago. Public protector Turima Doncella will announce today whether her office will investigate claims of corruption against crime intelligence boss Richard Mdluli. DMP Diane Kolobanot says there are several reasons why an investigation is warranted. These include allegations that it cost the Crime Intelligence Unit 5 million rand to employ Mdluli's relatives. The Hawks had also been investigating claims that 200,000 rand was paid from the Crime Intelligence Slash Fund for renovations to police minister Nightingale Tetra's private residence. The inquest into the murder of Mdluli's former lover's husband is meanwhile ongoing in the Boxburg Magistrate's Court. And in Bobo Premier, Keso Matala will officially open the multi million rand Mank Ela Bridge and Road at Mamoholo Village in the Dubati municipality outside Vegas for today. The 80 million rand bridge brings an end to the use of the notorious makeshift cable car that Mank Ela residents used for years to cross the Lep Ela River. Over the years, a number of people have fallen into the river and drowned, especially during the rainy season when the river swollen. You know, the 12th kilometer road from Benguet to Mankele through Mamaholo village has connected the